Hello, this is John Black, Super Chemist. We're here to make some ethyl magnesium bromide, uh, which is a uh, Grignard reagent. That's a reagent that you use in a Grignard reaction. So before I can do the Grignard reaction, I need a Grignard reagent. Okay. Um, you can react a Grignard reagent with a lot of things. Um, the easiest thing, at least in my mind, would be carbon dioxide. Although since it's a gas, maybe it's it's not that good. You know what I mean? Because you got to bubble it in, whereas a liquid you can put it in there and reflux it for a while. And, you know what I mean? It's not all escaping the reaction. But anyway, so I'm using uh, ethyl bromide that I made in a video. I've got some magnesium and two diethyl ethers for every more of these, right? I got my molar volume, molar mass of each thing. Now you can see this needs two moles, so I doubled the molar mass and I got 208 milliliters. You got your, you know, it's ionic. You got uh, your ethyl magnesium on one side, your bromide on the other side. Anyways, I took these down. What I did was I, all these 208 and these ones I took and I divided them all by three. Okay. Um, and I got these numbers down here. Now I added them slightly more, you know, an arbitrary amount. I just, cause, you know, make sure it all there's enough to react. Uh, some of it will have too much of the uh, oxide coating on it, and it won't react. So I just threw in another nine tenths of a gram. Diethyl ether. Uh, it forms data bonds with the ethyl bromide. Um, so when you use this 208, or in this case 69.3, um, you need at least two for every one. So I threw in a little bit extra just to make sure, and you know, as solvent, you know what I mean? You want some solvent in there. And uh, my mistake was I jacked it up to 80 milliliters. That 11 milliliters or whatever it is, um, I was planning on putting that in the pot. Instead, I, I put it in with the ethyl bromide, and you'll see later that I made a mistake there. Um, but anyways, let's get back to this. Um, a data bond is just a bond formed uh, bond. Like you have a covalent bond. That's where two um, atoms, each one, donate an electron, and they share them equally, or somewhat equally. An ionic bond, that was a covalent. Now, this is an ionic bond. is the same thing, two atoms are sharing two electrons, right? Each one has an electron, but one is being greedy and uh, pulling on or having control of the electrons more than the other one. That's ironic. Dative is they don't both donate an electron. Only one of the two atoms donates two electrons. In this case, it would be the ox uh, oxygen always has two lone pairs there. That's what those two lone pairs are for. There to form data bonds. Well, the experiment needs to be water free uh, because water does react with a Grignard, and uh, so you'd lose all your Grignard reagent. You know what I mean? If you put water in there, it'll react with that instead of the electrophile that we're going to use, which is carbon dioxide. Uh, so I baked all my glass apparatus in the oven, um, you know, 250, 300 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit uh, for you know an hour or two hours whatever an hour and a half and I dried all my uh, the ethyl bromide and the ethyl uh, diethyl ether dried it down you know molecular receives and etc you have to watch the videos if you want to see how that's pretty much it let's get started with the experiment first thing I want to do is go to my apparatus it might be hard to see here um, because the background is, um, you know, it's not just a one color. But anyways, it's just basically this part right here. Okay, don't worry about that stuff over there. That's for later on. Um, I'm going to put this, my, this is set up like refluxing. See how I got my um, water condenser here. Up on top, I have a drying tube, calcium chloride in. It's in hydrous, right? Down here, I'm going to put my magnesium in. 
and then I have this separatory funnel or equalizing funnel rather. Um, I put my diethyl ether and my uh, alkyl halide, which in, in this case is uh, ethyl bromide. I put that in here, and I'm going to drip it in, and I'm going to once it gets to 10% of my product being in the round bottom flask, I'm going to stop this. Okay, stop dripping it. Unless the reaction starts by itself by then. If it starts by itself, I'll just keep dripping it in. If not, I'll have to stop and heat this up with my hand or, or maybe a hot water bath. All right, so let's get this started. All right, I'm going to take the magnesium and I'm going to try and grind it up a little bit. Just so I can scratch the surface to get the magnesium oxide off of it. So it'll be more reactive. Now if it doesn't help enough, you can always throw a little piece of iodine in there. Very small piece. Alright, let's start chipping this in. I got a cold water bath here. And I got a hot water bath too, just in case I need one or the other. There goes the first trip. Second trip. There we go. I got covered. Yeah, put a little bit more in. That's about ten percent. This has been chilled down, so it might take a while. Uh, Reflux it. Oh crap. Pull that down, maybe. It's definitely getting hot. I can see how this reaction would get out of hand, man. That was going up the condenser, like, all the way to the top, man. I started getting scared there. That's why I put the cold water on it. I don't know if it's working or not. It seems hotter than it should be, that's for sure. So I'm thinking that it is. I mean I can barely touch this. This water I could put in my I could put my hand in this. 
No big deal. Yeah, it's definitely working. So I'm going to start dripping it slowly in just to keep the reaction going, keep it refluxing. Right? Oh, Jesus. See, trip, trip, trip. Oh, it's definitely hot. Toss in another 20 milliliters or so of this. I have to eat it. About 15 milliliters. I'm toss it right in the top. Just because I don't think there's enough in here. I think I blow some of it away at the beginning there. Trying to add it so it don't go crazy. You figure that the lethal boil is at 30, what is it, 34.6 or something like that? So you don't want it to go too high above that, I'm guessing. Keep in mind, this is my first grid in it. I've never done this. I'm not doing it from like any instructions or whatever, so. about 20 minutes so far. It's staying hot by itself. I'm not heating it up or doing anything. I'm just dripping it in. That's producing the heat. Turned up the drip rate. It's been 30 minutes now. Now keep in mind this room is 17 degrees and uh, this has been at 36 to 43 degrees for like 32 minutes now or 30 minutes or whatever it's been. So obviously something's happening. You know what I mean? when it went up that many degrees by itself and stayed there for a half hour now. I just keep adjusting the drip rate to keep the, you know, the more I drip it, the hotter it gets. The less I drip it, the, you know, so sometimes I'll stop it dripping. Most times it's just stopping by itself, so i got to start it back up, which I'm doing right now. Now always remember, science is great.